Okay guys, I wanna start out this video for two things. Uh, so I'm doing a little bit of an intro here. Uh, I wanna say, first of all, please have an open mind with this video. I'm going to say things you're not gonna probably hear anywhere else on YouTube. I'm gonna give you information. Um, and uh, I also want you to know, I have nothing but sensitivity and respect for people who are going through these issues, especially women. I know men go through it too, hashtag men too. Um, but I want people to know that uh, I've been through this. I've been through it mentally. I've been through it physically. I've been through this across the spectrum. I have nothing but support and respect. So I will ask that please let's keep everything as respectful as possible with this video, with the people that we're going to be talking about. Um, as, as well, please keep an open mind because I'm going to share several different perspectives and scientific information that I think could be helpful. So just kind of wanted to, to throw that in there. So, okay, also if you guys, if you would like to support this channel, please subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know when I upload, like the video, and I'd love you to leave comments, let me know what you think. So, okay, on with the video. Hi guys, it's Joy and welcome back to the channel. Today's video I am very excited to talk about, but I'm very sad about the topic. I'm actually excited because I think that I can uh, offer some perspectives you're gonna hear almost nowhere else on YouTube. Not just some scientific perspectives, some medical perspectives, but some perspectives from somebody who's been through it on both sides of the spectrum. So if you saw my title today, we are gonna talk about Eugenia Cooney. Um, I was really hesitant and I took a few days to figure out if I wanted to do this video because I really like Eugenia. Eugenia has always, throughout my career on YouTube, been supportive and kind of me always i will always have a lot of respect for her um and i also think a lot of what she's been through online isn't fair and i can relate to her as somebody who has been through her experience and been extremely thin and extremely overweight same experience and that's part of what we're going to talk to uh, talk about today so um anybody who knows about eugenia cooney uh eugenia cooney and i'll throw up some pictures here and you can kind of see what's going on uh, clearly she's got something physically wrong. Um, I have to be very careful how I word things, guys, because uh, unfortunately, you know, YouTube is YouTube. So for instance, um, I'm gonna talk about eating issues, please infer, or EDs. So hopefully you guys understand what I'm talking about so I can stay within the, the boundaries of YouTube's rules. Um, okay, so let's begin. Eugenia Cooney has been on, I think maybe since 2014, 2015. She kind of came from that, you know, like that, that time where people were kind of in the scene, if that makes sense, scene kids. She's very pretty. And uh, over the years, her body has physically just shrunk. And she was always very thin. In fact, she's talked about always being very thin, but she has just shrunk to where it's alarming. It's very alarming. Um, I, in the past, had done videos defending her when... Onion, uh, you guys know who that is. Um, when he had spoken about, uh, he'd done videos basically like making fun of her. And even though the spirit was she needs help, and I think that she does, um, my thing was to defend her because he was always picking on women's bodies all the time, on every spectrum, and would rate them whether or not they're attractive. And so I did a couple you know streams with her. I believe there's a couple of them. Um, you know, she left a supportive comments. She's always been very kind. And I had an argument back then, I still have more lately, that I want to bring up, and that I want to bring up information again, I don't think you're going to hear anywhere else, because it's so widely unknown. We have so much misunderstanding and misconception of what EDs actually are, and we're always told that it's only from the standpoint of mental illness. What if it's physical? What if there's physical illnesses? And that's what I want to go into that we don't hear about. Now, I'm also a child of the 80s and 90s. So I grew up in the ED. I'm going to call it the ED culture. I've had EDs since I was 12, but I've had issues with my weight even when I was eight years old, even when I was younger. There were always issues back and forth with we being too big or too thin. And a lot of it didn't make sense because I could eat next to nothing and both could happen. So I'm going to also give you the perspective of somebody who's been through it. And I want to give you some information. Almost every woman I knew growing up was going through it. I would say 75 to 80% of all the young women I was around were going through it. And many of our parents still had remnants of those mindsets um, if they didn't practice them themselves. 
So I want you guys to know, now I don't speak to a whole lot of teenagers or younger people, so I don't know what that is. I do think that's getting better because thankfully we've had better movements about body positivity, which although I think is fantastic, I also think is misguided and misdirected and misses a point. It misses one big point that I feel like everybody's missing when it comes to this topic. About 75 to 80% of all the young women I knew were struggling with it. And here's the kicker, you couldn't tell. Why couldn't you tell? In fact, the ones who are struggling with it where it's extremely visible, that's often more rare than not. Well, why don't we hear more about it? Because in this society, we don't take women's health or women's issues very seriously. Let me give you a quick story. When I was 16 and tried to get help for my issue, um, I was trying to fix it on my own because uh, I went to tell my mom, who was aware, and she had remnants of that. And I have a grandmother who very much is still in that, that ED mindset. And even though I would be pulled aside sometimes saying, eat more, you're too thin. It was, well, we're not going to get you help because I don't care to I'm not going to spend the money on it. Not that we couldn't just didn't want to. So I grew up in an environment where I wasn't allowed to get help for issues. I had to figure it out. So when I went to my doctor for some issues, I had, ex you know, the doctor had noted that I gained about 10 pounds and was doing it in a very snide, nasty way, even though I was like 5'2 and 120. Like it wasn't like my weight went crazy. And so I said, I'm trying to fix my issues. And she's like, you don't have any issues. I'm like, yeah, I have an ED. She looked at me with the most pompous, mean attitude and said, you don't have an ED. Did I ever diagnose you? And I, I was 16. I, I didn't know what to do or how to react. I said, um, well, no. She was, then you don't have one. And I said, I routinely don't eat. I don't eat. She was, well, what do you eat? And I said, well, sometimes I have this, this, and this. And she was, well, yeah, too much of that's going to make you gain weight. And I sat there horrified. And I remember going under, like, I literally hid under my bed and cried for about a couple hours after that, just mortified. We, I was trying to open up and say, I have this issue. I'm not eating. And instead it was berated. This happens to young women across the board until it's physically visible. We don't believe them. So why are so many women having these eating issues? And yet some of them aren't super thin. Some of them aren't thin at all. And some of them are overweight. I want to go into some of that because again, I'm going to give you information that you're not going to hear anywhere else. And this is also going to tie into Eugenia, but let's talk about Eugenia for a second. So Eugenia, she's got noticeably thinner and I was always a big proponent of defending her because here was my point. And to a large extent, I stand by this point with variations. So, and again, I'm going to ask you, keep an open mind in this video. Hear me out with this video. As you guys know, when I first put myself on YouTube, I detailed all the issues going on with my body and uh, I got nothing but um, people being mean to me. It was bad. It was bad to the point where it's, it's still hard. It's still hard because it hurts when you, we are, as I've said before, and I want to really put this out there because there's such a narrative that says, get a thick skin. Don't let what people say bother you. Well, yes, to an extent, but when you have to be in that environment all the time and inundated by it to some degree, or have your life compromised by that toxicity all the time, that that's like telling somebody in a bad relationship, just stay there and get a thicker skin. No, you remove yourself because it's not healthy to be around the toxicity. And a bunch of toxicity was created around me because it left people open to uh, skepticism. And that was, you know, and I was on a side of the internet at that time that was all about commentary and you know, need to know how to take criticism. And criticism was just an excuse to be mass mean to people, you know? Um, and, uh, and I think it's still that way many times. I, I do think that still goes on. And my goal was, you know, people said, oh, I'm a attention seeker, I'm this and that. My goal was to, well, there were a couple things. Number one, I think I was, looking at this as an outlet for support, YouTube, which, oh my gosh, I should have never done. Didn't know any better because I didn't have much support in my life for what I was going through or help. Um, cause you know, families a lot of times won't help you when you're chronically sick or you have issues. Um, so I opened up about my issues and I remember I got mocked for on both sides of the spectrum because I told people I'm, I'm gaining weight. I don't know what to do in the beginning. And I'm I, at the beginning, I weighed right around where I weigh now, maybe like five ish pounds less. And people go, Oh no, you look beautiful. And it was like, I appreciate that but I was teeny tiny before. Like I was about a hundred pounds and this happened over a handful of months and I can't stop it. I don't, something's happening. Nobody's listening. Nobody's believing me. I don't know what to do. And my health was getting worse. I was having a hard time reading and typing and writing and understanding information. My memory was going, I was in constant pain. And I felt like I was constantly under the worst cold and flu you've ever had with the worst stomach bug you've ever had. 
it was a nightmare, right? A lot of you guys, if you watched it, you know, and I was detailing it not to get sympathy. My goal was I want to try to detail my experience of getting better and figuring out what a mystery illness is. And if I can, maybe it will help other people with their issues. And we uncovered pieces along the way where we have a pretty good health work of, of what's happened to me. And a lot of the issues I have, funny enough, some of the symptoms are EDs. You can have EDs from some of the physical symptoms or some of the physical illnesses I have. As well, there are many other illnesses. Why don't we talk about this in society? My point is to say back then I defended her because I knew when I came forward with what was going on with my health, how horrible I got it. And I remember when I hit the numbers of being medically obese, I think it was like 167, 168. I did a video telling everybody and I said, you know what? I'm just trying to find acceptance and peace because something's going on with me and I can't help it. And I just got ridiculed it, it, uh, en masse in the meanest way. Oh, she's, she looks fine. She's trying to get attention. But then a year later, I come back at 270. 100 pounds later, 100 pounds in a year I couldn't control. And everybody went, oh my God. And let me say, I, I don't fault the people who had who had an extreme reaction to me because it looked extreme. But I then got ridiculed nonstop for how big I was. In fact, there are certain YouTubers who act like they champion on some level body positivity and you shouldn't make fun of people's weight, but decided this was a time to tell everybody, there's nothing wrong with me. I just sit and eat meat, meat, make myself bigger and bigger. And I'm just a disgusting, lazy piece of crap. This was during a time where I was really fighting for my existence on this planet because my health was so bad. There's a very deep wound and a deep hurt there because it wasn't just that. There was like half a million people that saw the video and tens of thousands in the comments cheering on all that negative energy aimed at me. So I'm an a-hole for warning people that this is happening and telling people I am gaining weight. And then when it happens, I'm horrible. Like, I'm a bad person. I, I can't win. I have a very soft spot for Eugenia because I've been through this on the internet. And this is something I've always tried to say when it comes to Eugenia and her issues. But I've softened on this and I want to kind of explain. I've said, I understand some of these arguments and I want to be really sensitive in this video to the arguments because I see the arguments on several sides. One argument that I've had with this is we don't know what's causing this. We don't know. And when I used to defend her, it was before she admitted she had eating issues. For a long time, she wouldn't admit it. And I'd get in debates with people who would say, oh uh, yeah, she, she does. I know she does. I'm like, how do you know? Well, look at her. I'm like, so? There are other people who have issues where they're that thin because they have physical issues. Oh, and of course they're mocked because of their appearance. And Eugenia gets mocked for being too thin or this or that, or people are so mean to her. And you know what's interesting? How many men consistently get picked apart on the internet for their appearance? How many men, can anybody in the comments Name a man who's too thin or too big that consistently gets picked on? The answer's no. The answer's no. In fact, in my situation when I got big, people compared me to looking like, um, what's his name? Oh my gosh, what's his name? He wears the donut. I'm not saying that to be mean, he actually like wears a chain of a donut. Billy the Fridge, I couldn't think of it. They would say I looked like him. And um, however, they don't, really diss him that much. Not in the same, you're never going to see videos on, we need to talk about this with Billy the Fridge, but you would with me and my body and what I was going through when people didn't understand it. And that's why it's interesting because I knew if I come back, I'm going to have to have figured everything out with my health and be much thinner. I would have rather have been thinner, A, for my own vanity and because these are still issues I deal with and B, because genuinely I, I like being in a smaller body. It doesn't mean anybody else has to be. This is just what I like. I like that aesthetic for myself. Um, but my conditions preclude me from losing the amount of weight I want too quickly. Um, I, and this, this, the weight that I've lost, I've lost 125 pounds in 10 months, going on 11 months. Yeah, we're actually right about now. Okay, so 12. No, actually, it's more than that. I'm sorry, it was a year. So September 2019 was when I fully went full carnivore and low histamine. So that's a year. Okay, so October, November. So we're going in month 15. Month 15 of, of weight loss. And if you guys knew how little I ate, I should probably be smaller. It should be much, much smaller than this. Um, the problem is the physical issues I have don't allow, it, my body will lose weight as it heals and as it will allow me to because I have issues in my body 
that stop the process of fat being able to get filtered through my liver, the fat cells when you lose weight because it's backed up with other things. And then the histamine, which makes inflammation and water retention and retention of everything. There's all of these different things. And I still stand by that except that Eugenia Cooney, she uh, talked to Shane Dawson and she did a whole, you know, a long video with Shane Dawson where she finally admitted she has an issue and she had been to treatment. Well, that kind of changes the argument and changes the game because before that, my argument was, what if she has a bad health issue she just doesn't want to talk about? And look at how horrible people have been to me when I opened up about my health issues. Look at how horrible across the board when I was big and when I was small, they were to me. Look at the way I grew up where you're either too fat or you're too thin, but I'm not going to get you help. Shut up and just go eat a sandwich. And by the way, that mentality ran rampant in the 80s and 90s. I have videos, please go watch them if you haven't seen them, um, about cancel culture and Shane Dawson where I explain we grew up in a very different era of time where things were a lot more brutal and mean and nobody cared. That's why a lot of our humor was so dark and crazy and nothing was off limits because this is the way we were coping with it all. Um, and and so um, so let's let's continue talking about this. So. <clears throat> Eugenia has gotten noticeably worse, noticeably worse. Um, and now at least because she has admitted it, we know that she does have an eating issue. However, is there more going on? Is there more she hasn't divulged? And I'm not saying that there is or there isn't. What I am saying is I think we should have a little bit of compassion and a little bit of respect for the fact that it's her health, it's her right to privacy and at the same time with that, that maybe she ha has something physically wrong and she's scared to talk about it. Now, that's one argument I have that I know goes against popular opinion. Let's look at the other side of this coin. I have heard the arguments people have about her and I'm torn because I agree with them too. And the arguments a lot of people have are that she is an influencer. You know, she's got a couple million subscribers. She gets hundreds of thousands of views on videos and that she is constantly displaying her body. She does a lot of like clothing try-ons and that sort of thing. And that what she is doing is creating a bad image for her audience. And then it begs the question, so is YouTube incentivizing her to be unhealthy? Um, that's a very good question. Here's the thing though. I think anybody in that situation, any positive reinforcement they're going to get is going to incentivize that. And like, you, you can't put that on YouTube or a social platform. It's not the platform itself. It's what people do. But I also agree with that. I also agree with that. First of all, now that she's admitted this was the case, I will say, let's leave room that maybe there's something physical going on. We just don't know about, you know, there's this woman called the ugliest woman in the world or on the internet. And she is, looks like Eugenia, but she's got a lot of physical issues. It's because she has she has a physical issue and people are so mean to her. Maybe she doesn't want to open up about, maybe there are some physical issues she doesn't want to talk about. I'm not saying there are. I'm not saying there aren't. I'm saying it's a possibility. But I also agree if she's going to be around all these young people, then her putting herself out there and using herself as kind of a fashion model in a sense, which she does in a lot of videos, um, doing a lot of cosplays, it can have a very negative effect on young women. And I know because as all of us sound off in the comments, ladies, if you're a product of the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, where all we saw were models that, you know, I wouldn't say most of them weren't as extreme as Eugenia, but we saw the, the depths of how thin people were. And here's the thing. If you are naturally thin, more power to you. You are beautiful. I'm so, like, I hate these memes that say real men like curves. And it's just like real men like whatever they like. People like whatever they like. And that's fine. I think we should look at it as you're attracted to a person and that's it. Like I've been with guys where typically they're not physically what I'm drawn, even though I'm not real physically drawn to a lot of people. Um, they're not typically the type that I'd be physically drawn to, but it didn't matter. And I still find them beautiful and I like them, you know? So um, I, I understand where people are kind of concerned and they're like, well, she has this young audience that's watching her and a lot of these audience, you know, these audience members, you're young and impressionable and they're going to think you should be that thin. I, I get that. So some people are saying, should we remove her? And I think this is a really interesting and, and sad debate because if that's the case, then should we remove, who's the one I'm always compared to? Amber Lynn Reed. People always compare me to her. Um, should we have removed me when I was so big? Should we remove all the big people or then that discrimination? Because aren't they influencing their audience? 
And you could say, well, no, because of the way they look, nobody wants to emulate that. Yeah, but hashtag body positivity now. So everybody has issues, guys. Everybody has issues. Every, I put myself on here. I've got issues I'm working on. We all have issues. We all have our, you know, things that we're, we're battling. You genius are just physically very there and we don't fully know exactly what they are. We have a good, we have a good understanding only because of what she told us through Shane. But we don't have her medical records and I'm not saying we have any right to that. I'm just saying we don't fully have a health makeup of her. So then that woman who's the ugliest woman of the world, should we remove her? But then the argument there I could see is, well, she's very open about the fact that she has these health issues and this is not how you're supposed to look and she's just doing the best she can with what she's been given. And with Eugenia, Eugenia is putting herself in an influencer position and those positions are kind of people that end up being idolized and you have influence over people. So should she, just because of how thin she is, not have a platform because her being that thin should not allow other girls to be influenced. So people with eating issues, should they not be on YouTube? And yes, you can visibly see it. Because what about all the other girls? Sound off in the comments across YouTube who struggle with their weight. Their weight doesn't make sense. It goes up and down in ways they don't understand. And the rules of weight loss don't really apply to them. This is the kind of stuff that I want to bring up. And then there's something else as well. And by the way, I don't have an argument for this. I, 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 I see all the sides of it. I, I don't know what the right situation is here because I can, I can see several sides of this. Um, I also think one thing that works in Eugenia's favor is my generation and the generation before me, we put our foot down and said enough. We're not going to let our children and especially our daughters, sons go through it too, obviously. We're not going to let our daughters and sons go through this because it's just rampant. It's rampant across the board. And here's, there, there are a few things I want to bring up. I remember my grandmother has a lot of um, ED commentary. So she would say a lot of things and kind of be nasty. And I remember she specifically said my mother was overweight and it embarrassed me. And I said, I will never allow myself to do that. I'll never allow my children to do that. Um, my grandmother also a couple times put me and my sister in harm's way for weight loss. Um that I remember. Um, and it seemed like between the baby boomers and the greatest generationers, that was kind of more accepted. However, it seems like from talking to the greatest generationers and even some of the baby boomers, being able to, and I'm not saying you should do this, but I'm saying the whole term, the whole concept of either not eating or restricting food or trying to eat super healthy, well, that was able to keep them, you know, slim and that worked. We have a whole generation like me, it doesn't work for many of us. You guys have heard me talk about when I was so big, I'll have days where I, I fast. I try to do it in the medically correct way. And I have days where I'll just eat a chicken salad that's very, you know, it's low, low, low carbs, no sugar, low sodium, you know, has all these good, awesome vegetables in there that I know that the intake of the vegetables, because some vegetables can be higher in carbohydrates and certain types-ish of sugar, depending on what kinds, right? Like, Y'all don't, what y'all don't know about me is I'm a health nut. A lot of people don't know this. They didn't know that part of me that I've always been before I got sick. Y'all knew the sick version and that's not your fault. It's, it's how my career on YouTube came to be, right? Here's my point. My point is I could eat a salad that day, feel not that hungry, and then I would gain five or six pounds. And I'm like, the logic doesn't make sense. And guys, it was every time. I would say my cheat days were a healthy day. The days I ate heavier and more food, I could more maintain and sustain my weight. But this is true for a lot of women. A lot of women, the rules don't seem to work, but nobody listens to us and we're just kind of told, oh, you're the, uh, you know, the archetype of this, the out of her mind female, right? However, science agrees with me. I'd like you to listen to a little bit of information from this woman at this TED Talk, where she talks about the fact that when it comes to society, she talks about that weight loss scientifically is actually really aimed at men and not women. Let's take a listen. So I asked, I was like, well, why is this? And the response was, women are an anomaly. So we don't necessarily study women in sport nutrition or exercise science. Maybe it has something to do with the fact there are sex differences from birth that no one talks about. And why is it that women feel a little bit 
less tolerant to the heat right before their period starts. And why is it that after two days of really intense training, feel a little bit flat? So I started asking these questions, and these questions were what drove and drive my research, all the way through grad school at Massachusetts, PhD at Otago, where in fact, I was asked, why do you want to study women? We don't know enough about men. <laughs> research position at Stanford University, same thing. Right now, I'm a senior research scientist at the University of Waikato's Adam Center of High Performance, and even now, I get pushback from physicians, from sports scientists, from doctors, even from athletes. Why do we need to study women separately? And so, I really say, well, you know why we need to study women separately? Because we have this thing called the menstrual cycle. We also have this thing called an XX versus an XY. And we are not the same from birth. Some of the other famous people, do they have degrees? No. Do they know where the original research comes from? No. If we look closely at that original research, most of it comes from obese, sedentary men who need to lose weight before surgery. And then it's just generalized over to the fitness population. If we look at how women have been marginalized across it, they're just assuming that this information is going to work for them as well. But it's not the case. So as we have this conversation, we kind of giggle and laugh. I want everyone in this room to turn and say, women have periods. <laughs> Don't laugh. <laughs> women have periods. That's right. We need to have that conversation because it starts at puberty. You need to open up that awareness. The more awareness we have about it, the more awareness we are that women are not small men. We can really work with our physiology, right? Work with our physiology to improve our, how, our health outcomes, to improve our performance, whether that be walking up the mount, running a fast 5K, or winning Ironman, whatever your goal is, working with your physiology. If we work with our physiology, knowing that women are women and men are men, knowing that women are not small men, then imagine the outcomes. I would be out of business, <laughs> and the billion dollar fitness industry might only be 10 million. Thank you. Now, if you guys are interested in that information, I encourage you to go watch the whole TED Talk. It's amazing. She's also got some other things on YouTube. I'll give you a little bit of info. That's from Dr. Stacy Sims, female physiology and nutrition. DrStacySims.com is where you can find her. And she goes into other issues as well as if you're um, other hormonal issues, uh, perimenopausal, menopause. Um, there are all these different things. And again, like she said, the research, what we know of weight loss is really tailored to men who need to drop some quick weight. We don't really know what that is for women, and it does not work the same for women. And I think all women across the board can scream in agreement, unless you're one of those lucky women that doesn't have issues, and more love to you, you're beautiful too. Everybody's beautiful, right? Now I wanna go into something else. I have a little bit of notes here for this, but I think this is, I, again, I wanna take this as an opportunity to talk about this. There are several physical illnesses that will cause an ED that we never hear about. And I want to go over some of those. In fact, when you look up the causes, I looked up physical causes, health issues that cause, I did several different searches. Out of probably a, you know, a, a couple hundred different inquiries I saw, only two articles touched a little bit on physically, that there could be physically something going on when it comes to an ED. That an ED sometimes is not the issue. The issue, there's a physical issue. I want to go over this. Many people end up getting EDs and having issues if they have celiac disease. If they have achalasia, and that has to do with having issues with the muscles of your throat. IBS, so many people have eating issues because of IBS and stomach and digestive orders. It just hurts too much, there's too many issues. Or you're the opposite of me, where with me, I had the stomach issues, which thankfully it's not perfect, but they're clearing up now. Um, and in my stomach issues, uh, Anytime I got, you know, stomach sick, please infer, I would gain weight. Some people, they can't keep weight on. Then, ding, 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 I think this is a very, I think this is a much bigger issue for people than what we're aware of. 
histamine intolerance and a histamine disorder, which what I am in the process of being diagnosed and treated for. I say that because in my journey into the Asthma and Allergy Clinic of Oklahoma, we're fairly certain I have it. I have other tests that show I have it. We wanted to do more testing, but then the virus hit. And I was told, unless you are, you know, unless you were on your, uh, unless you're about to leave the planet, unless something's that bad, stay away from all medical buildings because I'm somebody that's compromised with my immune system, my heart, all of those things. So um, histamine, histamine will have you not, I mean, and that's part of what I'm still battling at this point. Um, the stomach issues aren't as bad, it's histamine. So for instance, like in, I live in Oklahoma City. In Oklahoma City, we just had a couple of snows over the last couple of days and I'm really struggling and I've struggled with my weight. I put on about five pounds that I can't get off. I, if I were to eat low histamine, I could somewhat maintain it, but it's because when the weather has certain dips, well, when it has dips from any extreme, my histamines go crazy for a while. In fact, I'm at the point I think that is sometimes what a lot of people think is hay fever or seasonal allergies. And what is allergies? What do you take for an allergy? An antihistamine, it's all about histamines. And, 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 I, and, and I'm not saying that People don't have allergies. I'm saying that there are other issues there and causes and histamine and allergies. That goes hand in hand. Um, thyroid, thyroid issues. If you have thyroid issues, good luck. You're gonna have a very difficult time regulating your weight either way. Hormonal imbalances. So if you are dominant in certain hormones, estrogen, testosterone, um, I forget the other ones, but I know for me, um, what we're looking at is estrogen dominance. I've been being treated for estrogen dominance. People who are estrogen dominant, tend to gain weight, I'm, you can't see me, I'm slapping it, like around their midsection, their thighs, their butt. And I've always said, no matter how thin I am, I've got thick thighs and butt and I don't know why. And that's very common. And we've looked at that more in society. We've taken that, cause you know, we look at body trends over the years, certain bodies will be in trend and we see that as kind of trendy. All I'm saying is that can be indicative of a hormonal imbalance, or in my case, an estrogen imbalance. One of the first places I started losing weight was butt and hips and like thighs, always thick thighs, and, but I can have a real small upper frame and my calves are small. So it was like, it doesn't, situation doesn't make sense. But if you have hormonal issues, good luck. And as women, we all know that from birth control. Birth controls can do a world and a number to your weight and your eating habits. Water retention issues. Illnesses that create water uh, retention. What I have, POTS and dysautonomia. It's interesting because with POTS and dysautonomia, we have issues with having enough, like with POTS, having enough blood volume in our system. By the way, POTS and dysautonomia many times go hand in hand under the same umbrella, also fibromyalgia. There's so many interesting things there. Um, so we have, uh, a lot of times there can be eating issues because of we don't have enough blood in our system. Or with this autonomia, when your nervous system is misfiring and you're having, like I said, the chronic fevers making you feel sick, that'll give you eating issues. One that you guys know I've been through copper toxicity. Copper toxicity will shut off your ability to want to eat. Heavy metal imbalances, autoimmune issues. The other one, allergies. And if, with histamine, you can feel very weak and not want to eat. Why am I bringing this up? because I'm, I'm really frustrated at our society that says, if you have an ED, it's all in your head. Now, I'm not saying it's not mental illness. I do think all of these things go hand in hand. What I'm trying to say is, some of the people who have eating issues, the eating issues are there because there's something physical going on. And I think it's more and more common. Why is it with our mothers and our grandmother's generations, if they did healthy eating or restricted calories, or even let's say if they, you know, um, did things they shouldn't to try to lose weight, they would lose weight. And why do so many people, I know so many people who go into ED world and they can't lose weight no matter what they do. And I've watched them try and I've watched them struggle and go, you know, feel really out of their mind about it. Why is that? And I think it's because we have introduced so many chemicals, heavy metals and hormones and God knows what else in our food and our water. I think some of our biochemistry has changed. I think some of our microbiomes has changed. And as a result of the microbiomes changing and being imbalanced, we have a lot of people who have issues with histamine. When I was um, about six years old, I got diagnosed with extreme asthma and allergies and it just got worse as I got older. Back then, very few people actually just had asthma and allergy. Actually, very few people. I think I knew maybe one or two other people who had asthma growing up in our whole school. We had a school of a few hundred people. Um, and very few people had allergies in general. Sometimes you'd hear about a little bit of hay fever. Now everybody has allergies and asthma is 
so common. Why? Why are people's histamines out of control? And I'm not saying all causes of asthma are histamine, but I am saying many causes of asthma are histamine, especially if you have asthma related to allergies. Why don't we hear about these things? Why does nobody tell us if you have an eating issue, the issue isn't necessarily sometimes that you have an eating issue. The issue might be that you are physically sick. There is a physical imbalance somewhere in your body that nobody is looking at. And maybe sometimes people get tired of not being able to regulate their weight and regulate their bodies because something's going on that's not working in them. And I think we have more and more women where that's happening as well. Women with hormonal issues. Because like I said, we live in a society that does not care about women's health. And it really irks me how many men told me, just get off the couch, go to the gym and work out. And I was like, when I work out, I'm gonna gain, I can have the cleanest, healthiest diet and do the best workout. I will gain 10 pounds in that first couple weeks and it won't come off for months, if ever. Nobody believed me. You would have to, now roommate, as you guys know, believes me, he's lived with me, he's watched it. Only people who would live with me and watch it understand. Otherwise, people don't believe you. So I, I wanted to bring all this up. I wanted to use this time to really go into the depth and detail about EDs and, and, and really talk about it um, and go more into depth than what people do. And I don't, I don't fault people at all for not knowing the information I know. I know it because regardless of how many people were against me, whether it felt like the whole world on the internet or everybody in my personal life, except for a couple people, I said, I'm gonna stick to this. I'm gonna buckle down and either I'm gonna leave the planet or get better. And if I didn't get better, I was gonna leave the planet anyway. I'm lucky enough I found the results and I thought I'm gonna dedicate myself to trying to get this information to people. With that being said, I, I really want you guys to please hear me on this. Many people, probably the majority of people with eating issues have mental illness along with it. And what I mean by that is they mentally have body dysmorphia. They don't ever feel thin enough, you know, and I feel like a lot of that ends up coming from the society we grew up in that just inundated us with stick thin people, people that they're beautiful in their own right, but you could never actually be no matter how healthy your body was because your body isn't tailored to that type of, um, it's not tailored to, to look like that. It's just physiologically not. So all of that bombarding us, it says, you don't look like this. You don't look like this person genetically that you can't. Something's wrong with you. Something's wrong with you. Something's wrong with you. That gets into your head, those patterns, and then it reinforces, you have to look like this or you can't be loved. You have to look like this or you can't get ahead in life. All of these different things, of course, it's going to create mental issues that can spiral. So I, yes, we need to treat the mental side. Absolutely. My point is to say, many times, there's a physical component that nobody wants to look at. And I would like to be a voice that raises awareness to that. So to the girls who are watching, to all of you girls, and please share this with girls if you know they could hear some of this information. You have had EDs, you have struggled your whole life, and no matter what you do, no matter how perfect your diet is, you can't lose weight, may not be your fault. Go to your doctor, have them check up several of these things. Have them check up to see if there's autoimmune issues. Celiac, the big ones I would say, some of the most common ones. Histamine intolerance, histamine disorders. It's so funny, I'll tell people, I'm like, I'm having bad asthma coming up from my stomach. They're like, what? I'm like, I know it's creating inflammation here and it's causing restriction. What do you mean your stomach? It doesn't make sense. Well, histamine starts in the stomach. Like, there's all these things people don't, don't realize. And I want you to know, you're not out of your mind. There's not something wrong with you in, in terms of your mental capacity. It's that something's physically off. And unfortunately, our society does not care at all to cater to women's health because we are still looked at as objects. So men can fulfill their instincts once or twice a day when they feel like it. And I also want you to check your birth controls. That can do a number on you too. Interestingly enough, for some people, birth control helps because some of their issues it ends up putting back in balance. So it just depends on the person, right? Um, but these are issues that I feel like should be looked at and should be taken more seriously and just know um if you are a woman this may not be your fault and it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be believed make sure and have these issues looked at or at least push and i will also say if you do go down that route you're gonna have to push because a lot of doctors are just not gonna take you seriously this is just not and now not all of them like the ones that are kind of like my age maybe 10 years older they're a little nicer some of them boomers uh-uh they are very very intolerant the greatest generationers um I know because the one that, uh, that, that, you know, when I tried to explain that I had eating issues, who was so mean to me, 
Oh my goodness, that woman, that awful, awful woman. Um, and you know what's sad? That doctor's office specializes, her father specializes in allergies and asthma. And they said I was the most sensitive person they'd ever seen in their lives. And they consistently misdiagnosed me as asthma and allergies. No, it was a histamine. Disorder. How did you guys miss this? You will get misdiagnosed. You will be labeled. You will be put down. Oh, it's all in your head. If you know you've done everything you're supposed to do and things aren't working, keep searching. Because my hope is now that I have figured this all out and now I know what my body needs, how to regulate the histamines in my body, all of these things. My hope is within the next six to eight months, I will be back to what I used to look like and feeling really, really good. Um, and I just want to try to impart that information to as many people as I can. Now, I'm sorry, I know this got a bit sidetracked. I told you, you're going to hear info you're not going to hear anywhere else. Is it possible that Eugenia has some physical issues that make her not want to eat? I think that's, that's something to be explored. I don't know. I'm not saying she does. She might not even know if she does. But I think it's a whole other level of compassion where we can look at somebody with these issues. But then again, it begs the question, if you have any issues that are physically showing, should you be allowed to have a platform? Because could you be influencing somebody the wrong way? I understand the argument in Eugenia's case. I do think it's a slippery slope to go down. And I think it's a slope that could create a lot of discrimination for people. And it kind of concerns me. And also it's a fad, it seems like a fad where it's okay to be bigger, except in my case. Oh, it wasn't okay with me. But it can be okay to be bigger, but if you're too thin, how dare you? But I also know why. We're all so sensitive about this because we grew up in that culture and we don't want that for our children. I don't know what the answer is, but I do think it's a good conversation. And what I will also say is, please give Eugenia Cooney love and respect. Don't judge her. In the sense of she's opened up and says this is an issue and she's tried to get treatment. We don't know everything going on with her. We just don't know. We don't know her family dynamics. We've heard some things from people, from Jacqueline Glenn. I've, I've dealt with Jacqueline. I can say Jacqueline has always been respectful and kind and a decent person. One of the few on YouTube. Eugenia the same way. Most people are awful on this platform. They're just attention seekers and mean and out to make a few niggles. Like it's not good. It's not good, guys. Um, but I wanted to bring this up and I wanted to say no matter what you see somebody going through, have compassion. You may not know what they're struggling with. And you may not know that they have no support and that people are just being so ungodly mean to them. I know because I've been through it. When I'm fighting to keep myself on this planet because things aren't working, nobody believes you. And oh, you're just a fat, disgusting, you're just a fat, you know, gross person. So you shouldn't be here at all. I know what that's like. And I also know, I also know what it's like to be so thin that men are constantly using you as objectification and manipulation. And women always look at you, not always, but the majority of the time they look at you mad and mean and don't take you seriously because you just must be ditzy. <laughs> and they get mad because they can't look that way. Um, and sometimes, and here, here's the other thing too, guys. Sometimes people gain weight because they don't know how to manage food. They don't have how to man. And I'm not like I want you to know. I'm not saying that doesn't happen. It obviously happens, but we know that. I'm talking about the unsung women, the unheard women, the unbelieved women that are having these issues, and nobody listens to them. And then sometimes that that makes them go, "Screw it, might as well go and eat what I want. Might as well at this point, right? Because nothing I do works, which can create the issue to spiral out of control and to weight gain even further." I'm just saying this is a big spectrum that we have not caught up with yet as science because in our society, we do not demand women's health or health in general have a, a, a place of emphasis. And I'm really hoping if anything 2020 is going to do, it's going to be shine a light on that so we can get the help that we need across the board. I hope everybody who's struggling, no matter what it is, no matter if it's physical or just mental or both, I hope that you guys get the help that you need. It's not always that easy though. These treatment centers, people, you know, that like Eugenia go through, you know how much money that takes? People don't have the money to actually get better or the money that therapy takes. So just understand there may be a physical issue. Look down that path. Okay, guys, I think I will end the video for here now. If you like this video, please uh, help me and support the channel and give me a big thumbs up, like the video, subscribe, hit notifications so you can be notified uh, when I upload and you can see these videos. So notifications. I'd love to hear everything you guys have to say, and I'm a little scared of this video because, again, I, I'm afraid that 
people are gonna get the wrong message from this video. I'm always afraid I'm coming across the wrong way. I really hope in the way that I've spoken, it's within respect to everybody and what they go through. I'm just trying to give more information and more insight. Um, also guys, uh, please share this content with women you think that are struggling that this could help. Um, cause I do a lot of, you know, I, I try to be an advocate for women on this channel and children. So if, you know, if you know women that are struggling, send them this video and it might help them. Um, and, uh, yeah, you can go to my other channel too. Like I said, I got stimulus news, Katie's insight, like the page or like the page, sorry, Katie's insight, uh, go subscribe and hit notifications there. I'm helping people with stimulus. Uh, so that's something else I'm doing. Okay, guys, take care and blessings until the next video. Um, I just want to let you guys know, no matter what, please understand I'm doing nothing but trying to send you so much positivity and, and love and let you know that you and your health are always worth it. So lots of love to everybody and hugs and kisses. Bye, guys.